Okay, so it is time for my review of The Night Watch by Sergei Lukyanenko, which is a very tough name to pronounce, but it's not going to be as tough as it is going to be to review this book because <laughs> this book is extremely tough for me to review the the plot of the book because it is a very complex plot. I've seen a lot of people try to review this book and it's not easy at all. I almost considered not reviewing this book but I felt like I would be doing a disservice to this book if I didn't do this review. So I am going to do it and uh, yeah, so welcome to my review of The Night Watch. This is a spoiler and spoiler free version. Uh, what I mean by this is the first third of this review is going to be a spoiler free section of the review where I give you three pros and three cons of what I thought about this book. Then we go into the spoiler version. The second third of this review is going to be me discussing the plot with you and then the third uh, the third section of this review is going to be me giving you all of my thoughts, spoiler thoughts, of this book. So let's get right into it and discuss The Night Watch my pros, my cons, what did I think in a spoiler free way. Okay, so I'm going to start off with my rating for this book. Now, Goodreads does not allow 0.5 stars and every time I talk about this I say let's get something happening here where we can have Goodreads allow 0.5 stars to occur. But that's fine. My official review of the, my official star rating for this book is 3.5 stars, which makes it a good book. But unfortunately, because I cannot go as high as four stars with this book, and I'll tell you why in just a moment, I had to revert back to three stars on Goodreads. But I did write in my review, let it be known, that my official review is 3.5 five stars. All in all, I did like this book more than I was, I gave it more stars than I was allowed to, so I just want that known. The first thing that I did not like about this book when it comes to my cons, I'll give you three of them, is that you're kind of running really fast with these characters to try and catch up and work out what the heck is going on here. I've experienced this with a couple of books and I really don't like it because these books aren't that I'm reading anyway. They're not supposed to be mysteries, so if it was a mystery, I would completely understand that you get pieces of the puzzle here and there and you're trying to work out what's going on, but this is a fantasy. Not only is it a fantasy, it's an adult fantasy and it's a tough book to follow. So to add to the fact that it's a tough book to follow and the fact that it's an adult fantasy, to have to try and work out what is going on as you're going along because you're given no explanation whatsoever as to what is going on was really, really, really tough to do. But you'll find out in my prose why I kept reading anyway. I just wanted to make that point. The second con about this book is that having read it, I can't really tell you too much of what it's about because it's just really tough to explain. It's like someone saying to their friend, I had an amazing day, and the friend says to them, oh yeah, what'd you do? And you kind of say, well, I actually didn't do much. I just had a, but I still had a really good day, or I don't really remember much of what happened, but I had a good day. And that's how I am with this book. I know that I loved it. I really enjoyed reading it, but I can't tell you too much about the book because the plot is just really hard to describe because there are a lot of different things that happen. Also, tacking on to my second con of this book is the fact that there are um, there are books in this book, and I don't like that. At least I'm pretty sure there are anyway, but I'm not seeing them here. I'm just quickly flicking through and I'm not seeing them. But I felt pretty sure that there are books within this book. Anyway. I'm going to take that back until I can confirm it. If it's true, it'll be on my Goodreads, but I just have the feeling that was the case. In case you're wondering, this is not the most recent book that I read. In fact, I read this book three books ago and then decided you know, just now that I will review it, where I've been umming and ahhing ever since I read this, whether or not I was going to review it. End up saying no, and now I'm saying yes. Okay, so those are my first two cons for this book. My third con with this book is the fact that the characters refer to themselves, or some of the characters anyway, refer to themselves by their full 
name. Now, if this was only done in an appro- oh, I'm sorry about the glare. If this was only done in an appropriate setting, that would be fine, but it is done all the time. And I, I just found it really annoying. One name that will stay with me is the boss of the protagonist, and his name is Boris Ignatievich. The main character does not call him Boris, which I understand, that's his boss, but he also doesn't call him Mr. Ignatievich, he calls him Boris Ignatievich, and he does that all throughout the book. Whether they are sitting down having a drink, whether they are at work, whether they're at a house, or whether it's a casual conversation, professional, whatever, it's always Boris Ignatievich. What do you want me to do, Boris Ignatievich? Would you like another beer, Boris Ignatievich? Um, what do you think of this, Boris Ignatievich? It, it just... It just wasn't necessary for me. But part of me is starting to think that maybe this is just Russian culture and that, at least in this world, the world that Sergei Lukyanenko has created, maybe that's just what you do. You refer to people by their, their full name rather than their first name or a um, a, a, pre, a prelude, the Mr, Mrs, Miss, and then a surname. And anyway, that annoyed me. Otherwise, no other real cons about this book. It is relatively long, I will say that much. It's definitely a tome. It is, just going to get a number for you here, 531 pages short, <laughs> pages long. So it was a very long read and it did take me a long time to get through. I guess that's kind of a con because by the time I got towards the end, I really just wanted to finish this book. And that's nothing against the book itself because the book was fine. It was just more, I wanted to read something else. So yeah, it just, it took a long time to get through. And considering that I am also this month reading a tome and a half, which is an over 700 pages um, <laughs> book. Yeah, I read a lot of long books this month and I just wanted to get to the end of this one. All right, so let's talk about my pros of this book, shall we? <laughs> this was an extremely exciting book. I absolutely loved every single moment of the journey. It was a lot of fun. The magic systems, oh, sorry, and that's my first point. The second point for my pro list is that the magic systems in this book were interesting. The world building was amazing once I was able to wrap my head around it because it takes a long time to wrap my head around the world. <laughs> but once I did wrap my head around the world, it was really a lot of fun and I absolutely enjoyed it. So there we go. And yeah, I think that's all. Oh, yeah, and sorry, I've just got a note down here because honestly, it was that long since I've read it. The protagonist ends up going on, yeah, there are, there's got to be three books in here because I'm just remembering the protagonist goes on three separate adventures and they are book one, two, and three. That's something that I don't like, should have been in my con section. I've come across this a lot with the stories, the novels that I'm reading is that there are like many books in the one story and I just don't feel there's a need for it. And if I get to do a, a a video where I talk about things that annoy me in books. It is having like three books in one novel when you really don't need to have three books in one novel. If there was a reason, if it made sense, that's fine. But to me, it just doesn't make sense and that did annoy me. But the three v adventures that our protagonist, who's, by the way, his name is Anton, well, that's what they call him, but his official name is Antoshka, which I love that name, Antoshka. Uh, the three uh, adventures that he goes through and goes on, I did find amazing. I absolutely enjoyed this book. It was a great ride. All right, I am now going to pause and we're going to go into the spoiler version. I'm going to explain the plot as succinctly as I possibly can. It's not going to be easy <laughs> at all. And then I'm going to tell you my spoiler thoughts on this book. So if you only want to see the non-spoiler version, I recommend that you pick up this book if you like, if you like high, uh, not high fantasy, but if you like fantasy books with a, a pretty decent world building, then I definitely recommend that you read this book. I will certainly give you a, I don't remember what they call that thing, but a, a warning 
and that is that this book is written by a Russian author and the culture of this book is extremely Russian based. Now I'm not saying that that's a negative thing because I quite enjoyed it. It was a very different book to what I'm used to reading, but I need you to know that going in. This is certainly not an American, an Americanized American style book. This is not an English or an Australian style book. This is definitely a very Russian styled book. I loved that, but I just wanted to warn you on that, in that certain tropes that you might expect with fantasy, they don't really come up in this one because it's not your standard Americanized version of fantasy. So please do be aware of that when you do read it. 3.5 stars from me officially, 3 stars on Goodreads because you can't do 0.5. That's the end of my spoiler-free version. I'm going to pause, and when we come back, we'll talk about the spoiler side of things. So if you are leaving me here, thank you so much for watching. Mwah, happy reading, and I'll see you again soon. Bye. <laughs> okay. Spoiler time with this book. We can kind of sit back and relax. The job is done. We've done the spoiler free version and now let's get into the nitty gritty. Here's how I'm going to explain the plot to you. I'm gonna read this because <laughs> seriously it's just there's way too much that happens in this book for me to be able to sit here and say well, it was this, and then this, and this, because it's more like it was this, and this, and this, and this, and this character was doing this, just way too much. So I'm going to read the blurb for you. So I'm up front. Here's what the blurb says. So good that the film feels like a trailer for it. I didn't even know there was a film for this. So <laughs> there you go. It shows I haven't read the blurb. I did not know there was a film for this. It's probably not one that I want to watch, to be honest, but I didn't know that. Okay. But if you have read, if you have seen the film according to the blurb, this is apparently so much better, it makes the film feel like a trailer. Okay. Walking the streets of Moscow, indistinguishable from the rest of its population, are the Others, possessors of supernatural powers, and capable of entering the Twilight, a shadowy world that exists in parallel to our own. Each Other owes allegiance either to the Dark or the light. Yeah, so that is something that I do want to discuss with you guys. So with this book, um, if you have magical powers, you get to choose whether you want to fight for good or for evil. And I appreciate that. I love reading fantasy books where there is a choice involved. Harry Potter is an example of a book where there is no real choice in Involved. Well, there is, I guess. There's a choice involved over whether you be good or evil, but for those of you who have read Harry Potter, I'm talking about the house sorting. You don't really get to choose what house you're in, where with Divergent, and again, not really giving away spoilers, just little segments that don't mean much, with the factions, you get to choose where you go. So I love that whole idea of the characters in this world getting to choose what they do. And certainly in this one, there is no, you must be good. <laughs> and so certainly with Harry Potter, it felt like Harry Potter had to be good. When I think of things like Charmed, I felt like the Charmed ones had to be good. They were kind of forced to. And many other things along the way where you're, you're either forced to be one or you're forced to be the other. But in this one, you choose right off the bat. Once you come into magical powers, you are an other. That's literally what they're called, others. You are an other and you get to choose. Do you want to fight good? Do you want to fight evil? Fight for good? Fight for evil? Fight against good? Fight against evil? If you are fighting on the side for good, you may end up on the Night Watch. If you fight against for evil but against good, you end up on the Day Watch, which is the second book in this series. Okay. The Night Watch, first book in the Night Watch trilogy, follows Anton and Toshka. Thank you. <laughs> A young other owing allegiance to the light. The light is good, the dark is evil. I feel like that's pretty much a given, but I just want to, to clarify that for you. As a night watch agent, he must patrol the streets and metro of the city, protecting ordinary people from the vampires and magicians of the dark. When he comes across Svetlana, a young woman under a powerful curse, and saves an unfledged other, Igor, from vampires, he becomes involved in events that threaten the uneasy truce 
and the whole city. According to Scotland on Sunday, fascinating, one of the most original and readable supernatural fictions in some time. Now, that's, uh, yeah, that's where we're going to go with this. That's basically the premise of the book, and so he does. And Toshka goes on these journeys to try and assist Svetlana, who is who was a, I believe she was a magician, but she did something wrong, so she was punished and forced to live out her life as an owl, which that I found really interesting. She was an owl that talks. Um, and he does save the, the one we just spoke about, Igor, from a vampire. Igor ends up being an other. He doesn't know he's an other to begin with, but he ends up becoming one, and they help him. And yeah, I just found it to be a pretty good fantasy magical book. One thing that separates this book from others is um, the fact that this book contains an other world known as the Twilight. So to enter the Twilight you basically step into your shadow and then that becomes the Twilight world that you enter and that is the magical world. There is a term I used to use all the time on this channel but I don't use it that much anymore and that is called human landia. I have it as my own subgenre. That means how much are humans actually, and the human way of life actually involved in this book. And I want to use it again with this book because this book kind of flitters, because I just want to use that word flitters, <laughs> it flitters back and forth from Humanlandia to the Twilight World, the magical world, back to Humanlandia, back to the Twilight World, back to Humanlandia, back to the Twilight World. But all in all, it is an absolutely amazing read. Now, one thing I didn't like about this book is that there are moments along the way where it gets a little stagnant, there's a bit of a lull, and I just did not appreciate that, but the action scenes I did love, and they were absolutely amazing. The relationship that Antoshka has with Svetlana, I really did appreciate. I'm really trying to remember the story, but I remember appreciating it. I loved seeing them work together, and... Wait, is that Svetlana? I think I'm talking about Olga, actually. <laughs> oh, gosh. I think Olga is the owl, Svetlana is the woman, and yeah, I did not appreciate Svetlana, but I appreciate Olga, the owl. Um, I appreciate the Russian themes in this book so much, because it's so different to anything I've ever read, and yeah, I just found that that was amazing, but it's really hard to review a book that you haven't read for like a week and a half but anyway but I really did enjoy this book and what I will say is if you are open to reading a fantasy book that contains all different types of fantastical beings vampires wizards warlocks magicians you know the list goes on and on and you are open to it being culturally Russian, you will enjoy this book. It is a really fun, enjoyable book to read. It is just really hard to do a review on. <laughs> it's really hard to explain the plot. But the So I've done a terrible job at it, and I knew I would, but that's okay. I'd rather have the review out there than not have it out there, because I feel like I'd be doing a disservice to this book if I didn't at least say something about it. So, I will say, Sergei um, Lukyanenko, the author of this book, please don't think that me doing a bad job is because I don't like your book, because I absolutely love this book. It did receive 3.5 stars because of the fact that you are racing to keep up with the characters, because of the fact that there are three books within the story which I just felt was not necessary, and because of the fact that I just found it personally annoying that first and surnames were used for most of the characters all the time. I did not like that. But it wasn't a two star, it wasn't a one star, it was absolutely 3.5, and it was a fun journey. So if this book appeals to you, certainly pick it up. Now, this book was uh, presented to me during an unboxing that my favourite booktuber was doing. She received this from a subscriber and she was reading the blurb and it really enticed me, so much so that I went away from that video going, oh my god, I need to get this for myself, I don't care how I do, and my library ended up having it. I do not for a moment regret reading this book. I just found it absolutely amazing. So I think you will too. If you enjoy fantasy and magic systems, you will enjoy this. It is not a hardcore magic system, it's more of a softcore magic system, but it is 
but it, the magic within this book is interesting. The world building is absolutely fascinating, and there is a treaty that is mentioned in this book that I found to be oh, just so awesome. So we'll pause for a moment, and then I'm going to talk to you about the treaty. Just a moment. Okay. Let's very quickly talk about the, uh, the treaty. There is a treaty between good and evil that appears in this book that I have not read anywhere else, and I absolutely loved it. Basically, it's a treaty between them both saying that one can't really harm the other unless the other does it first, which is just amazing. So if evil harms a human, let's say, then good has the absolute right to practically kill the evil being or put them on trial. But, you know, if they've harmed a human or if they've killed a human, then they, yeah, they're going to be in big trouble. And it's the same with the other way around. If good breaks a rule, then evil has ab the absolute right to revolt. If either side revolts against the other, then the other can bring them down. So the other side, then they can bring them down. And I just, I'm not explaining this well, but the treaty was just, I found it to be really amazing. So it's not like good and evil are at each other's throats purely for the sake that they are good and evil. It's not to say that doesn't occur at all throughout the book, because there are times where that does happen. But for the majority of the book and the way that the world building is set up throughout the story, that's not the way it goes. It's more, if evil does something wrong, then good has to deal with that. They have to go after evil, they have to rectify the situation and bring about justice for what evil has done. But if good does something wrong, then evil is responsible to rectify that as well. So, but if neither side do anything wrong, then neither side has anything to do. They just kind of live their lives and maintain this watch that they do where they just watch to see if either side's doing something wrong. I love that. It's very utopian in a fantasy world, something that I've never come across before, because it always seems to me that evil just wants something, and so they just go out after it in a blind fit of whatever it is. I mean, I want to say rage, but whatever it is. I want this, therefore I'm going after it, and I'm going to have it, so let's go. There's... No real thought to what will this do to the world? What will this, what impact will this have on everyone else? No, it's more, I want this, so I'm going to get it. Nothing's going to stand in my way. But in this world, you really have to consider, okay, I might want this, but at what cost is it going to come? Because if I do this, I'm actually breaking the treaty and the treaty is held so dearly on both sides. And I just really, really, really love that. I, I've i always wanted to... This is just a sidebar. When I was young, I always wanted to have magical powers and fight on the side of good, because good's just better. I just feel it is. <laughs> um, but I wish I was in a world like this, where yeah, I don't have to go after evil because they literally are evil and no other reason. I only go after them if they've done something wrong. And I just absolutely loved that. And that's another reason why this book is definitely three, definitely 3.5 stars as opposed to three stars. So absolutely love this book. And I think this is a wonderful place to end this because I've been talking way too long already. I'm trying to shorten my reviews and it's not working out for me, but that's okay. So once again, this is The Night Watch by Sergei Luk Lukyanenko. I want to make sure I get that right. So thank you very much for watching this. If you've read this book or if you plan on reading it, let me know in the comments below and let me know what you thought of it. I post videos every Wednesday and Sunday and I post reviews in between. So I'll see you again next time. Thank you so, so, so much for watching. Mwah! and happy reading. Peace, blessings, and so, so, so much love. Bye! <laughs>